Hi everybody, welcome back to another crafting with me, Aviva, your art director from Ed Asner Family Center. Today we are making something so squishy and incredible, very sensory based and just a fun kind of messy project to do at home. This is like a very basic amount of ingredients that you're going to be using for Kool-Aid Play-Doh. It's going to be so fun. So I haven't personally drank this stuff since I was really young, but we're going to get a little crafty with these. I've seen a lot of people use Kool-Aid for things that aren't usually drinking. I've seen my friends used to dye their hair with Kool-Aid. You can use it to paint with like watercolors, but today we're making some Play-Doh with it. So what we are going to be using today is a few different ingredients that you should usually have in your house. The only ingredient that I didn't have in my house was this first one I'm gonna talk about called cream of tartar. And I've never actually used it during baking. I'm pretty sure people use it for like pies and cookies and stuff. Um, I couldn't tell you what it's made of, to be honest, but it's definitely important for our project today. So you're gonna be using that, some cream of tartar, and some vegetable oil, flour. You're going to need hot water, salt, some measuring spoons, measuring cup, and obviously some Kool-Aid. And then to end it off, you're gonna need some, like a nice good bowl or tin to be working with to actually be doing your kneading and mixing and some type of Ziploc or container that you can keep your Play-Doh in. All right, but let's just jump into it. I'm really excited. Okay, so I'm moving everything off my table, making sure my sleeves are rolled up and that I have a nice clear space. I definitely suggest doing this in a kitchen or on a nice big table. Alrighty, so we are going to start off by making our powder concoction because we are going to be mixing our water and oil separately. So I'm bringing my water over here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off. I have my little recipe sheet right here. And so what we're going to start off with is our cup of flour. So what I'm going to do, actually, I realized that I am going to need my measuring cup for my um, measuring of my flour and my salt. So I am just going to mix my oil mixture first. I should have realized that first, that's okay. So here I have my one cup of water and it is pretty hot. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm gonna be adding my vegetable oil in. Vegetable, vegetable oil, <laughs> kind of a tongue twister. But what we're going to be using is our little spoons here. And I'm going to be finding one tablespoon. Just opening up my oil here. And the reason why we're using hot water is it's going to be a, using cold water wouldn't really um, dilute and dissolve our Kool-Aid. So we want to make sure that it's really nice and warm or even really hot. So there we go. One teaspoon of olive oil into our water. Obviously, they're not going to mix together, but that just gets our liquids in one little spot. I'm going to give it a little mix so that some of that oil comes off my cup, my spoon. Put that to the side. And now I'm just going to pour in my oil and water into my pan. And as I go, I'm going to keep adding it into my pan. Okay, so I'm just going to move that up. And our next ingredient that we're going to be needing is a, you can really do it in any order now for the rest of our ingredients. I'm gonna keep our Kool-Aid to the end for a nice little color surprise. But next, I'm gonna think I'm gonna go for my flour next. So I'm gonna take my flour out and I'm gonna fill a cup of flour, okay? I'm gonna try not get it all over the place. I like folding out this little edge here to make a nice little spout. And just pour it into that cup mark. One cup. Okay. Give it a little tap. Helps to even out our flour. Give it a little bit more. Okay. 
One more tap. Alrighty, and so I'm gonna pour that into our oil and water mixture. Make sure most of it's out of there. Obviously some flour is gonna stick on there from our oil and water beforehand. Okay. So now, it doesn't really matter if there's some flour left in, it's all gonna be mixed together in the end anyways. So it is getting a little messy. This is what I told you, be in a nice clean spot. So now I'm going to be adding in my salt. So we're definitely gonna be using a lot of salt today. So I'm gonna be opening up the big side of my little shaker here. And I'm gonna be wanting to pour in about a quarter cup of salt. So let's find that quarter cup line. It's our first line on our cup and we're just gonna go for it. Might be all the salt that I even have. Let's see. All right. I'm just gonna pour it all in because I think that's about perfect. I had the perfect amount of salt here. Let's move this back up. Our nice little flower island we've got going on here. <laughs> Let's pour that in. Okay, we've got our salt, our flour, our water, our oil. And next, we are going to be using our cream of tartar. So, let's see here. Let's get our spoons out. We are going to be needing, let's see what options we have here. We're going to be needing two tablespoons, okay? So, my tablespoon is still a little oily, but that's okay. So, I'm going to be taking. Very nice and powdery. I'm gonna be filling up two of these. I'm gonna do it over my bowl. Less spillage. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of a pat, making sure that's even. Okay, pouring it in. This is really not a super, you don't have to be like super precise about it, you know? It's really just Play-Doh. It's not like we're eating any of this, even though it is all edible things. I wouldn't suggest eating it. It's not going to be super delicious. Alrighty. Let's make sure it's kind of getting stuck in there. I'm just going to use my finger to kind of pour out the rest. <laughs> that should be good. Just doing a little flattening and then just pouring it in. Alrighty, let's see, we've got our flour, our salt, our cream of tartar, our water, our vegetable oil, and then to finish it off, excuse my messiness, you know, we've got a job to do, it's serious, serious messiness. For our last step, we are going to be using our Kool-Aid. So I have three different options here, I'm only going to be showing you one today, just to get the idea across, but I'm going to be going with this. Hmm. Let's do pink. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is just adding one package of unsweetened Kool-Aid. I'm pretty sure you want it to be unsweetened just, just so like it doesn't go bad. You know, the sweet could also attract bugs and stuff when you're playing with it on the table, but I'm just giving it a nice rip across the top and I'm just gonna be pouring in the whole packet. See, it's already turning a nice pink. And so now, this is where it's gonna get a little crazy. I'm gonna use my hands to kind of just mix up and I'm gonna keep mixing until that color really is blended in there, okay? So as you can see, it's not turning into that Play-Doh-y kind of substance that we want. So since it's not a super precise kind of um, uh, recipe, I'm just gonna be adding in um, my, my assistant, because my hands are quite gooey right now, is gonna be adding in some more flour. We're gonna be adding in some more of our ingredients just to get that Play-Doh-y kind of consistency.
All right, I've got my little, i am finally got that consistency that I wanted. You know, what I did, because in the beginning when I started making my Play-Doh, it was very runny. So as I was mixing it, I was having my helper pour some more flour in as I went. That cream of tartar really started activating once I started moving it around and playing with it. And I also, these packets that I got, I ended up realizing that it's kind of like the smaller packet compared to that larger um, packet that would usually fill like probably like a whole pitcher. So I ended up using this red, it's a blue packet, but it's actually red powder on the inside. So I added a nice red to it to give it this nice, really pretty pink that ended up happening. And as you see, it is just the best consistency right now. My hands are definitely very messy, but I am having so much fun playing with this. And I'm sure you will too, once you start making your own. I suggest making a bunch of different batches of this, lots of different colors. I'm sure, I think, actually I'm pretty sure Kool-Aid has a purple, obviously an orange, and I think a green too, I'm pretty sure. But now that I've got this lovely consistency, I really wanna save this. I, you know, I wanna keep playing with it. I wanna be able to have it for next week. So what I'm going to do to make sure that my Play-Doh stays nice and squishy and doesn't dry out at all, I'm going to be keeping it safe in one of these Ziploc baggies here. And I wish you guys were here to smell this. this it smells so good from the Kool-Aid. It smells so fruity and delicious. The blue packet that I used is Fruit Punch, and then this pink packet that I used was Pink Lemonade. So here we go. An easier way to put um, something into a bag like this would be probably folding down the sides, but you know me, I am impatient and I just want to get straight to it. So, there we have it, our lovely Play-Doh. Even in a bag like this, it's so fun to play with. I'm definitely gonna be giving this to my brother Eddie later on for him to play with. I'm sure he's gonna love it. Maybe we can make some more colors later too. So fun. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Send me pictures of your Play-Doh and some of your cool sculptures that you make with it. I can't wait to see it. Okay, bye guys. See you next Saturday.